Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algie, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. Hey, welcome back to our latest episode. This would be 163. And we've got a great guest tonight. Well, what's this? I don't know. Mad, because everybody's mad, like, I got mad games. Games. These <laughs> people who don't watch the videos, <laughs> people who don't watch the videos, they don't know what the hell we're doing. We're just laughing. But anyway, so that's, that gives you another reason to watch YouTube, which we are on every week when we do this show. Anyway, this week we have Todd Howarth, and he is on here talking about the uh, return of the comet. He's been so gracious about uh, coming on the show. That was his third. Actually, that was his third time back. He's yeah. almost ready That's for a correct. jacket. But anyway, he's been very nice about it. He talked a little bit about. Well, anyway, we'll we'll get to that later whenever he comes on. So you'll get to that. Beforehand, uh, Alan, you probably got some shout outs for this week. Shout outs, my Alan. <laughs> All right, episode one hundred and sixty-two <laughs> shout outs on Facebook. We've got. Brian Harris, David Cathy, Bill Elam, and Stephen Wright, and of course the three of us idiots. And on Twitter, David Cathy, Jay Skablewski, Peter Sasir from I Love It Loudcast, Hairnet Radio, Stanley Lives for You, the letter U, not the word U. Sonny Pooney, Save Rock and Metal, Stephen Michael of Growing Up Rock, and I also want to point out that Tawny Katane, the yes. uh, the verified account. Liked our podcast, so Tommy, woo, call woo. Me. I'm gonna be on the you, show. You can, you can dance on my van. Oh. Yeah, Tony. We actually want we actually <laughs> want to get Tony on the show. Do you say vein or van? Vane? Uh, you'll have to go back and listen. I'm <laughs> okay, I just have to listen to that later. <laughs> and, uh... No, I would actually like to. I would actually like to get Tony on the show because you know she is the girl on the front of the Out of the Cellar Rat album. That is her doing her little. Yeah, you don't have to post. Please song. don't do that. It ruins everything. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and you know why? And you know why that is? I, I did a little research. You know why she's on the on the cover? Because she got paid yeah. to post. No, she was actually dating uh, Robin Crosby. Oh, when well, they go. were just starting out. So that's whenever I guess she was the girlfriend of them, and then she dated and then married David Coverdale, and that's why she's on all the videos from there. But I mean, she's had a—I mean, she's had a very interesting uh, career as far as you know, with rock and and, and rock people, and uh, she's in Bachelor Party. That's a great movie with Tom Hanks. I mean, she she played <laughs> along with Tom Hanks. That's a great movie. I just watched that the other day. I said, that movie is actually really funny. So I the like Rotten that Tomatoes that you reviews movies and Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, what? Uh, so before we get Todd on here, uh, anything going on? I know that Alan and I, Alan's birthday is coming up. Actually, it will be well from when we're recording this. It'll be tomorrow. We're recording this on a Monday. This is Monday the eighth, uh, eighth of, eight, of April. And uh, I got a just got a ding. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, we're going to be Alan and I are going to be going to uh, Nashville tomorrow to see Kiss. Now we're not going together. Just, just no, so people no. know. I'm going to be showing up <laughs> late. Actually, David Caffey has my tickets, and he sent me his uh, uh, cell phone number here just a little bit ago. So I've got to meet him. Hopefully, we're going to get down there before the doors open and uh, get down there. Well, and... for your sake, Dennis, I hope you're not sweating getting that ticket to the very last minute like I was in Louisville. <laughs> oh, well, it probably will be. I mean, it's not going to be nothing easy. Ne n nothing, you know. Was it nothing worth doing? Is is worth is it easy to get? Or how's that? How's that saying that go? Not even close. <laughs> Four on, score Bill. and it's seven like... years ago. <laughs> Enlighten me. That's, That's about how real... close you were. I don't know, but yeah. cliches are not your thing, dude. <laughs> anyway. No, anyway, so we were going to be, I'm, I'm hoping to leave, because my wife actually said, Kelly said today, she goes, what is the last, what is the time we have to leave by? What is what is our cutoff date? Oh, is she I going said, with Look. you? Yes. I oh, bought her that'll be, you'll have a great time. Yes. 
I hope she doesn't watch this episode. <laughs> well, by the time she got, watches it, it'll be too late. He's got a. He's got this like like this bad nerve thing where it was like said, I was like shaking my head no. <laughs> she actually you know, she wanted to see it in an arena, and yeah. that was her idea. So yeah. that's why I got these tickets. So anyway. Well, I was going to join you. I got offered tickets as well from two different people. And um, I have got a full day of work tomorrow and a full day of work on Wednesday. And uh, driving four hours, going to a show and driving back four hours would not make me. uh, I would not have the ability to make a presentation on Wednesday. (laughs) So that's really not going to work. I I wish you could have hit it, though. It would have been nice if you could have did it. But you'll be in Jacksonville. That's on, right. I get to go to Jacksonville on Friday with my dad and my sister, my two brothers, and my sister-in-law. So, and you're going to do yes. a, you're going to try to do an interview with your dad too, so we can put it on here at some point. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, be, he took be me. Cool. Be cool. He took me to my first show, so I'm going to. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he thinks about his last show. Yeah, that'd be because he won't be, be going anymore. Yeah, that'd be so. cool to go see that. So, so Dennis, awesome. where is your where are your seats going to be tomorrow night? My seats are in uh, the uh, arena. Yeah, they're in the arena. I'm actually <laughs> in the corner, and I'm in row, I think, uh, B or C. You know, they, they do double A through double F, and then A, B, C from there, on the from starting from the floor. So I'm in the corner floor. I think it's one on. Is it one o nine or one nineteen? The corner. I don't. I I don't have my ticket. I got gotcha. you. So. So you're down on the lower level. But I'm on the lower level. Yeah, I've got this time fifteen. So for the for because like I said, I'm side. I'm actually I'm actually in the same same side same corner as I was in Louisville, but I'm not going to have the obstruction of all the upper shit going on to see the big screen because I couldn't see none of the big screen when I was in Louisville because because of really wow I didn't realize it was that high. No, well, yeah, well, I was up there, and then plus that rack, you know, comes all the way out. You know, they have that kind of a square that comes out from the stage with all the lights on it. And then they got the two uh, movers that, you know, do Gene and, and then do a, a Tommy that come out. Well, those things are just about where I was at. They were eye level right straight to the big main big video screen. Uh, okay. So I actually couldn't see any of that big screen. So it was kind of, but it was kind of cool for me because I I knew that I was going to see this show multiple times. So I watched them actually on stage. It was kind of like an old show for me. So I didn't watch the screen at all. Now I get to see that and see all the the upper stuff that I did that I missed from that uh, Louisville show. That I'll probably interesting for see for, for a guy not not going at all. This is your <laughs> second show, <laughs> and you got tickets for a third show. Second of three. I'm not. I'm not going. I wanted to. I want to. You know. Remember I, it how I saw I, it last. By the you time know, this, no. by the time this whole thing is over with, right. I will. By the time this year is over with, I will have seen Kiss five times, because I'll watch the this Sailaway year? show on the cruise, and then I right. have a. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. When you get a right. cabin, you get one night or the other night during the makeup shows. Well, and you got to think about this too, though. This is our first run through the states. Oh yeah, they'll be back. Right? They didn't even. They didn't. If you if you think about, it, they didn't even hit St. Louis. They or missed Cincinnati. Yet, are, right? So they missed Cincinnati's a lot. Cincinnati's later this year. Oh, is it the summer? Is it a shed tour? Uh, but, but still, St. Louis yeah. hasn't even got hit yet. So I'm thinking that what they're going to do is they're going to do another run through at that point. Maybe Evansville will get a hit. That would be awesome if they did. So I may I'm be still seeing telling another. y'all that's going to be the Lost Cities two tour. Yeah, it may be. So anyway, so, so before milk we it, milk uh, it, baby milk that money, milk it, milk it. Oh, you know milk they will. It, as long as they it. can. I, mean, I, I tell you what, it's a good show, and everybody needs to see it. So I'm going to take Kelly to it. Anyway, I went record shopping yesterday. Oh, smart ass. I know. <laughs> went, I went to my 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 little local place. You want to see what I got? It wasn't a it wasn't a big haul, but it was a uh, See, it's one, two, three, four, five records. All right. Eighty-five dollars. No, actually, I spent twenty. Oh wow. Twenty-two dollars. Like I was gonna guess thirty-seven. No, twenty-two. So anyway, this one here is a little bit racked as far as the uh, uh, the cover, but the record is really good shape. Got oh yeah, cool. Good record color. I mean, I love this record. Yeah, I mean, it's a good record. 
but it was eight dollars. It was a little bit more than what I wanted to spend. But the um, yeah, it's cool. Like I said, the record's really good shape, so that's why I went ahead and got it. Um, got a little Rod Stewart. Uh, good album. That's a good album. It's got hot legs on it. That's yep. uh, Footloose and Fancy Free, and it I got this for four bucks. Oh and, wow, and it's really good shape. One that Ronnie had, and I we we listened to a couple times, and I was like, going, you know what? And I ended up getting it for three fifty, quarter flash. You know, hard my heart. My heart on it. Yeah, it's got hard my heart <laughs> and hard uh, <laughs> find another fool. The only the only two songs we know by quarter flash, unless yeah. you're a super fan. But anyway, you know, three fifty. What the hell? All right, so here's a Bill. You're gonna like this one. The head pins. I have that. Yeah, I don't oh, have this. Yeah, I have both of them. Is it good? I yeah, I, remember, a, I the only yeah, thing I remember is I for... seen it. Well, and I seen it. Yeah, it is a cutout. I got it for six bucks. And it's good. Sh- good shape. They're really, you know, those are really hard. To, if you can get a head pins for under for under ten bucks, that's really good because I I never see them for less than ten bucks. Six dollars. Six yeah, bucks. Good deal. But it's the whole good. point was, I just, I just remember you talking about the head pins. I don't really I like know anything them. about them, so I'll put it on in here and we'll, I'll check it out. From Canada, Canada, Canada. Hey. Canada. Bill, Bill, you a should take a country. nap before you do the show. Dude, I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just that was so rude. I'm so sorry. It's all right. If you're, don't watch the video. <laughs> you anyway, won't see me do there that. We go. Well, that's okay. Everybody could hear you yawn too. Seven oh seven, the second album. I want I I actually have I haven't got I've got I've actually have a CD that has the first and second album. This one really has no um, no hits on it. It Tonight Your Night was the big hit. It really didn't go anywhere. Now, Unfortunately, Dennis, you said there's no hits on it, and then you said Tonight Your Night's was a big hit. Is that on the well, same album? That, or was, is that, on a, that was that was that was the was hit that was on this album. That was a single, and it only got to like number. I'm trying to look it up the other day. Fifty something. I don't know. It, it it never really hit really hard. It was in the top hundred yeah, for like you. a week. But anyway, uh, and unfortunately, this was this was the album before Todd got into Seven Oh Seven. He came in and recorded the third album, which got shelved for many, 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 many years. So anyway, but I, I do like 707. I, I think they're, they're a good group. And it, it was just odd seeing this. And I got it for uh, five bucks. So cool. anyway, that was really? my record finds for the week. Um, another cool little tidbit today I heard actually on the radio. It was actually last night. Kelly and I were, we were coming back from, the, uh, from eating. What is the most radio played song according to BMI? Do you know what that is? Because that song has been taken over by another song as of yesterday or this last this last week. Well, I would say the song that took it over is probably Bohemian Rhapsody. No, you're wrong. Just a guess. No, this is B. I guess BMI is. I mean, they're just. I don't know what how much their standards are or what how much they're used as rankings. The BMI said originally for years. The main song that's been played more than any song ever is "You Lost That Loving Feeling." That's that's oh, been that could be the song Righteous Brothers for a long for a long time. Now, you want know the one that just took over is one of them Cardi B songs or something? Oh, nope, it's a us. "The Police." Every breath you take, really, that has took over that song. Well, I thought that was kind of odd. I can kind of believe that because. As a wedding DJ, you know, people don't pay attention to lyrics to some of the songs. <laughs> it's a stalker song. <laughs> it's a stalker song. It's like severely stalker song. You know, huh. I, I actually got accused. I got I got accused of being a stalker this week by somebody that I know very well. <laughs> it was me. He's got a beard. <laughs> We have an original song that we've been work that I that Rodney and I wrote a few years ago called. Oh yeah, it uh, really was me. <laughs> one and I only. I know that. it is. <laughs> one, one and only, and he's like going. So I sent the song to him. He goes, "Who wrote this stalker song?" I'm like going, "Well, it's Rod and I. I mean, we just it was written to be a stalker, and, and that's actually before that was a couple years, actually years ago. So that was before we knew that uh, the police wrote a stalker song. 
So anyway, there's probably a lot of stalker songs out there. So here, so that gets, that leads me into another really quick thing. Let's analyze a song real quick that I heard. Uh, I know you're going to just being an ass. What is, what is the most, uh, all right, what song? <laughs> okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to word this right. I should have wrote this down, but of course I didn't. So, you know, I'm going to go a long way around it. Well, if right. we were ever really prepared for a show, <laughs> the listeners would just probably quit listening. That's probably true. Yeah, all five of them. <laughs> so the most <laughs> functionate couple song ever. What? Written. What did you say? Is functionate? That's not a Dis- word. Dysfunctional or, or oh. most <laughs> dysfunctional. The most Help. dysfunctional couples song ever. Yeah. What is I that got song, you, babe? You... No. I don't know. The Pina Colada song. All right. Oh, I agree with that. I totally okay. agree with that. So the thing is now, I got to really, I was listening to it the other day, and I got to, I got really, I don't know, for some reason, I started really thinking about it. For I was, I heard it on the way to work, and then I was sitting there on my fork truck for two hours, guy, kind of analyzing the lyrics to it, like going, that's the most fucked up song I've ever heard in my life. Now, here, here's my reason, okay? This song was written back in the, what, late 70s, 79. early 80s. Okay, before the internet. So when you had to do, when you placed an ad, you had to actually do it in the paper, okay? So his girl, so this guy, you know, he's all, I'm getting tired of my girlfriend, but his girlfriend goes out and she puts an ad in a personal section. So when you did that, you had to get probably, then you had to go get a a post office box <laughs> for your shit to come to because they used to send them to post office boxes, okay? So she's like, this big thing where she's cheating like hard time on this dude okay so she sends this thing out then he you know he re- he responds to the ad and then he goes and then they meet up and it's and then she even this ad says that she wants to drink she wants to have sex on the beach or in the co caves or you know whatever it is the cove of the sea or whatever it is you know? but the whole point is so then they meet up and it's like, it's a big joke. Ha ha. I didn't know you really liked this. So now we are going to spark everything up. Now, being that she had to put the ad in the paper, she had to get a post office box. How many times did she escape before her boyfriend showed up? <laughs> if you think about that for a minute. Well, just for the record, People's... that was, they were spouses. They were not boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, they were spouses. They're married. That even makes it even worse. I know. <laughs> think about that. So here, so here's the thing. So hopefully he was the first guy that showed up for this escape. Now, if he does, wasn't the first guy. You know, how many times did she escape before he showed up? You know, he may have got a paper and and then didn't. You know, maybe he was. You know, well, better yet, does he care? But the whole point is, are you going to trust this girl again? I mean, it's like, he's all happy. It's like, oh, now yeah, we both like pina coladas. We like, I was like, well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> she was ready to do this with anybody else. <laughs> Am I going to trust this girl again? I mean, that's that's a messed up song if you really start thinking about it. That was just my, my take on it. Does anybody else think that's a messed up song? Out of right field, oh, we have Dennis Talbot on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious though. I don't know why I thought about that like that. I just I got, one morning I was like, uh, maybe it's too much coffee. I don't know what it was, but I started thinking about it. I'm like going, that's a really messed up song. So, <laughs> hey anyway. Bill, Bill Elam, th- there, there's your, uh, <laughs> there's your thing when you repost this show. <laughs> there you go. All right. So let's get uh, let's get well, back to let's, let's. Oh, I thought you were getting ready to uh, jump on a. Todd, I'm not no, quite ready. No, no, no. You're not ready yet? Do? Not ready yet. Um, I just wanted to point out, this came out right after we did our episode last week, but uh, right. by now everybody's pretty well aware that Ozzy Osbourne had to cancel all of his 2019 concert appearances because he's been battling pneumonia or whatever, and as he was getting over that, he something happened to him, and he aggravated an injury from that ATV accident he had right. back in 2003 so he is not doing any shows this year he's had to cancel like Rocklahoma and all of the festivals that he had been involved with and uh, basically man I hope he I hope he gets past this and recovers from it that's pretty tough especially the life that fella's led he's 
Yep. You know what? I feel bad for I feel bad for sure. Yeah. You know what? At this point, really actually work and shit like that. Well, the whole (laughs) point is, you know what? Just let him. Here, here's a here's a a plea out to Sharon. Let let Ozzy fucking retire. Let him fucking enjoy the rest of his life. What he's got left. He's made enough money. Just, he wouldn't know just what to do. Let him, just let him, just let him fucking live. You know, it, it's just the point where somebody made the comment. They said, uh, "Can I? I am going to mention this because it's funny." Somebody made the comment. They said talking about Sharon and said something about, "Yeah, if Ozzy passed away, that Sharon would put him out on tour, and it would be the weekend at Ozzy's <laughs> tour." Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, that, so, though, as, I mean sad, as sad as that sounds, I mean, it would be, she'd be the first one to jump on a hologram. I'm, I guarantee it. She will. Well, the deal hologram up. is going to be, they're actually going to tour that. Yes. They're actually getting ready to actually, they've honed it, I guess, and, and redid it. And they're getting ready to go back on tour. And I, you know what? Honestly, if it comes anywhere close, I'm going to go see it. I think it would be interesting to see just, just to see it. Cause they're doing a Frank Zappa one that's coming out soon. <laughs> I know. I'm a. Yes. I actually like Zappa's music. I don't. I don't know what I think about it. I'll wait to look at a YouTube video before I decide if I would want to go see it or not. Yeah, you know, I think you got to be hard to video. Be flickery. Yeah. You know, I've been it's to Disney be though. Anyway. <laughs> Was it a Disney or is it? No, I take that back. It's Universal Studios. They have a one where they're. It's on the, it's on the, uh, was it the earthquake ride where you go in there and there's, um, uh, Dennis or not Dennis, um, uh, Christopher Walken. It's kind of a three, it's kind of a hologram kind of situation deal. And it's pretty freaking real when you're sitting in a specific, you know, a specific spot. Specific area. Yeah. It looks pretty damn fucking good. I mean, I mean, they got the, the video so clear. I mean, it looks real. And then of course, when he walks by and he'll knock a book off the thing and they'll, you know, something's popping it off, you know, so it makes it kind of brings it a little bit more 40 kind of situation. But you know, I saw I, the Michael Jackson one in there's a Michael Jackson hologram at the one at the Cirque du, Cirque du Soleil, Michael Jackson show in Vegas at, at uh, Mandalay Bay. Right. It's really good. I mean, it was, we were sitting in the back of the state at back of the theater. Right. So it looked real it from where we were though. sitting. Yeah. yeah. I would, I, you know, if it came by and it wasn't really expensive, I'd go see it. Just to see, you see what it looked like. I don't think you're going to go. I think you're going to say you're going to go, but you're not going to go. Cause like this other tour where you say you weren't going to go, you, you went <laughs> five times. So. I might go four times. Yeah. So. You're probably not going to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anybody else got anything else to talk about this week? I'm going to go about. see Kiss tomorrow. Yeah, oh, wait, we already did. It. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> and it's your it's birthday. birthday. And tomorrow's thing is, birthday. It, this tomorrow comes out is the 20th anniversary over. of my 29th birthday. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> hey, I made you're Dennis only buy yourself a beer for me. I made Dennis do math. Now he's got to go take an Excedrin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, his head's going to explode. <laughs> I got a pencil. Ooh. I'm going to go wait, wait, wait. 29 times. <laughs> All right. Speaking of which, stop doing some math. Let's let's talk about some rock. Let's talk about some uh, Return of the Comet with Mr. Todd Howarth. All right, so you got to wait every 75 years for Haley's Comet to come around. But there's another comet that's coming around very, very soon. And we have one of the people that's coming along on this comet, Yay. Mr. Todd Howarth. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing good, guys. Thank you for having me here. Bill Allen, Dennis, that's fantastic. Awesome, awesome. Well, I know we, I've been talking to you, and you've been you've been busy as a beaver, you and and oh John, God. and I mean, you guys, you guys have been uh, and Steve and Richie, you've been just busy right. as hell trying to get this thing going, and get getting everything ready, getting it all tuned out, and yeah, it's and we've been we've been working, we've been doing homework, uh, you know, by ourselves, and then uh, the uh, Steve or Budgie and and John and Richie have gotten together. Um, uh, one day every week for the, I think past three, three weeks, maybe even four weeks, uh, to get a little prepared without me. And then I got in here, we had a handful of, of rehearsals that went pretty good. It's, it's, it's kind of like talent in a blender, but I'll tell you, uh, Steve <laughs> Budgie is so solid and that helps. Of course, so is John and, and, and Rich and I worked out some stuff and we're still working out things even as late as yesterday. Uh, and it, it it'll get ironed out when we do it live, but yeah, it's 
it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun for a lot of people. And you're right. The common only comes around uh, every once in a while. If we have to wait another 30 years, it'll be a whole different set of players because I won't be doing it. <laughs> yeah, I'll be 92. Yeah, there's an age factor. There's yeah. an age factor rolling in there. That's awesome. For sure. No, like I said, so what, you guys what, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, I was gonna, So what got you guys started to, to get it back together? Well, it's a funny thing. Um, uh, an interesting story. About 15 years ago, I was uh, contacted by uh, a guy that still works for Errol Smith, and his name's um, uh, Tommy Higgins. And he approached me on, about a question that would concern, uh, I'll just put it, with Errol Smith. And I said, oh, that, that sounds cool. Um, but the idea never came to pass. And then just recently, I, God, I think just before Christmas, uh, Tommy, who's a fan of, of all of, of us as musicians, he approached John and he said, "Hey, what about putting a you know comic band together, and and not uh, you know not Ace because Ace is busy." And we, I think at that point there was or beyond before that there was speculation that maybe you know Ace is going to go back to Kiss again, you know, as all the proper strings were attached just to make him dance a certain way, and uh, so it was going to be like a, a comic alumni, you know, get uh, maybe. Uh, Anton, but you know Anton's busy with uh, Joe Bonamassa, and uh, I said that name right, right? Bonamassa. Yeah. Um, and then we thought about other drummers, including Billy Ward. But then uh, Richie brought up uh, that uh, Steve uh, Budgie Werner, and I'd never played with Steve, and and you know uh, Richie's a pretty good, uh, 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 you know, has a good opinion of, of good talent that he's played with. And John had played with him as well. Go, oh, that's that's right, uh, Steve Budgie, uh, of course, because he played with Ace. And they got together, and then John called me and said, "You're gonna love this guy. It's just solid. He's this, and and he's a great guy. He rides Harley's too, so uh, you know he's he's a Harley Harley guy." And and uh, that's what how it was put together. They called me, said uh, you, John called me, said, "You want to do this?" And I thought about it because I'm I'm working on my uh, trying to work on my solo stuff and my book, but it just takes intensive concentration to do just that. But I, I thought, you know, uh, yeah, let's try this. Let's try this. And uh, so we started putting it together. Cool. That is awesome. Yeah. No, we Tommy, were yeah Tommy Higgins is, he's working. He's, he, we saw him today. He was, he's, uh, he's so intricate in the whole thing. And he'll be there tomorrow with a couple other people that work with us and uh, for the first show. And, and uh, that's going to be a good thing. Because we were wondering, like they would, you know, like last year playing with in the in, at the Andy Expo, right? And then you guys did the pre Kiss cruise uh -huh. this this past uh, fall. I figured that would be kind of a catalyst too. It's gonna people hearing that and wanting maybe you know getting the idea of going with that. So that that Kiss pre cruise party was packed. There was so, of course it was going to be with uh, you know Vinnie Vincent's uh, parents. <laughs> it was good for the fans. You know they they had a fun time and. Um, right. But it was a good place, and I think there's there's probably enough interest. But you know what? We're all older and wiser not to to believe you know certain internet hype and 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 buzz. But there is a lot of interest here that I think is pretty valid. We will see in these handful of shows, and that'll right. be a, a, you know a predetermining factor to go further or just go okay. Well, we got we've got a certain amount of shows set up. I think we got a couple more online uh, uh, or in in the works. Um, okay. See how it happens. I know you've got you has got four dates in uh, April. You're going to be in uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Sellersburg, PA, uh, Foxborough, Maine, and Pasipi, Pasikipi. I gotta say that New York, oh, the Chance the, Theater. <laughs> I thought I was bad pronunciation. I, 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 <laughs> I <was> bad. <laughs> And then, P like I said, you got a couple. Of, I forget what it's called. Pukitski? Is that right? Pukitski. Pukitski. Yes. There we go. I'm adding too many damn letters in there. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. And like I said, you got a couple of dates in June in uh, New Jersey and, and Long Island, uh, right. New York. I'd love to see some Midwest shows. I, I, I hope you got. We've got a lot of people asking me about that. And I feel bad that I can't say yes. We'll be there. Sure. But the pr pr uh, the truth of the matter is, it's it's fundamentally possible more po plausible for me to come to the east coast uh rather than drag out our whole ensemble you know including the band members out to the midwest yet but if these go pretty well uh and it'll be contingent upon demand 
uh, you know, butts in the seats and, and uh, the talk about and the buzz and what promoters think they can or can't do. Right. You know, it's better to do a couple shows, well, a handful of shows in certain areas like we're doing here out there to compensate the cost, you know, because I mean, we're not looking to make, you know, money. I mean, be rich. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, if I, if I was looking to money, make money in, in uh, you know, music, I'd, I'd be about 40 years younger and have boobs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you know, we're going to see what happens. And if we can't do it and take a chance and gamble, we will uh, go out to the Midwest. Yeah, that, that would be awesome. Like I said, there's a lot of, and like I said, there's a lot of those theater type things you guys could hit and, and yeah. do well. Cool. And like I said, it, I think it'd be awesome. And we will definitely keep track of what, you know, where you're going to be going, keep track of, you know, with, with your website and all that. Thank you. That's awesome. I think, the, I, I think the response at the indie show was incredible. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was magical just because of you guys all being back together and playing with Ace and stuff like that. But it was just, you know, it, 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 it was just a really cool night. That whole that whole event was pretty cool. It was, yeah, it was very, very, uh, pretty well put together. Uh, you know, it would have been nice, you know, if we could have practiced, you know, a couple of songs. But mm -hmm. right. it doesn't matter. Like you said, all four of the original, I mean, the original celebrated or, or pu uh, published uh, recorded Comet was there uh, with Anton, John, me, and, and Ace. And it was a lot of fun for the fans. Uh, the the photo session that we did, uh, uh, kind of the VIP thing, I guess it was. Uh, that was fun too for the fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. And uh, <laughs> I think they had fun. You know, sometimes they feel bad because it's such a quick process. You know, moving it's like come in, click, get out. You know, that type of thing. But right. you got to accommodate so many people so uh, small of a time. But yeah, the response was good. And I think that gets people thinking, and, and uh, you never know what's going to happen. Not asking uh, specific songs, but how many songs do you guys plan on playing on your? On I your think we record? have. God, was it about? We have one medley set up. We're do about. Uh, it's the equivalent of you know three tunes, two and a half tunes. Right. Uh, with that, I think it's about eighteen, maybe. I I think that's what it is. Yeah. That's a good show. So is uh, Richie going to be doing the Ace vocals? Uh, he'll be doing some of his ace, yes, a few ace vocals. He'll be doing uh, his songs, right? Uh, and I'll do my songs and some ace vocals as well. And then uh, we're gonna split up. Uh, I think we're split up one or two, uh, probably one at this point. Uh, it, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a surprise for you know, maybe not so much of a surprise at this point, but. You know, a lot of fans have been asking, well, who's going to sing that song? Who's going to sing this song? I mean, I, I, we don't know yet, you know. Well, that, that was my question. Which yeah. one of you are singing Breakout? Because it better yeah. be Todd. It, 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 well, it's, yeah, I, and, but because Richie was involved with writing, you know, most of the lyrics. And, yeah, uh, I know. Instrumental getting in. I mean, you know, Ace Dubs have the one line, you know, about the food here sucks, which is brilliant, you know. Right. And, uh, it's hilarious. It's such a, such a well, difficult you know that's something that ace would know yeah well yeah, yeah. <laughs> i would know and i don't plan on knowing you know Good i know job. it's not going to be uh you know a cuisine that you want to frequent often but i think that rich and i are gonna have fun with the breakout and i think the fans would be pleasantly surprised that's good uh, like, yeah, so uh, like the shout it out loud thing i think that would be pretty cool yeah yeah that was that was a lot of fun um that we could have done more with that too but yeah, I always liked that song. It was a fun tune. But anyhow, yeah, my most of my favorite songs were in the in the in the common era was was your songs anyway. So it's going to hey. be. I mean, I, that's one thing. It'd be interesting to see. That's one thing I I missed whenever when Ace does his shows. You 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 didn't get those shows. You know what I'm saying? Or you didn't get those songs. Yeah, you didn't and get I, that. Uh, you know, the <laughs> one they do is breakout. And but the the interesting thing is for me, uh, you know, playing with Richie now more. I mean, I always knew he's a great player. But this, you know, Richie is bonafide. You know, he's he's a rock and roll. He is the emperor of rock. I mean, he's an unbelievable uh, lead player. Phenomenal, uh, inspirational, or spontaneous player. And he lives that life. He is that character. He's just pure rock and roll, and he lives to play. Doesn't matter where he sleeps or what he eats, what he does. You know, he's not, he, he's not, you know, there's a lot of, I guess, rumored in the past about things or the way he was, but that's all bullshit. We, when I spent the weekend with him, we had a great time getting to know each other and talk. And 
Yeah, we think a lot alike on a lot of different levels. I'll leave it at that. Uh, but he's he's uh, just a, a he is a consummate rock and roll guitar player. So playing with him and then playing with his songs uh, off of uh, you know the album that he did with Ace, it's a lot of fun. I'm having a blast with him. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's cool. be good. Well, that's, and that's the whole it's, point. You guys are having you guys are having fun, and that's and that's what makes it makes it good for you guys. It's not yeah, like you are yeah, it, it's there. There's no competition. You know, it's if we first talked. I think I've said this before, but when we were talking about doing this, it's like you know, well, you know, I'm the lead singer. I play a lot of instruments. You know, some pretty good, but you're the lead guitar player. You sing too, and you've got a stylistic voice. It's you know the whiskey voice. You know, but it, it works. A lot of people love that and they want to hear it, and that's great. But they want to hear him play the leads. You know, I play some leads, but I'm not the lead player. You know, Richie's the lead player. You know, just, you want to hear some screaming, ripping shit. You listen to, you know, gee, yeah, that's how that works. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. So you guys, like I said, you're starting out actually uh, tomorrow night, right? Yeah, tomorrow night we get there, and and I think the show is going to morph into tomorrow's going to be like a finding ground because we never we haven't all played live, you know, together. Uh, you know, uh, Steve Budgie is going to be just slamming at the guy. Man, that guy is solid. Besides being a great guy, he is a solid player. And he he just adds so much to it. And then John Regan, of course, is just you know one of the most solid, greatest sounding bass players I've ever played with. And then Richie will be you know his usual wind up all over the place, and I'll be you know however wound up, and I'm I'm going to be behind you know the the mic and the keyboards. But uh, it's going to be an interesting dynamic, and it it's going to be more interesting to see how it's going to work out and the shows ahead and if we get more shows that we can play consistently together you know then we'll polish it down it'll be a fine machine tomorrow it's going to be a lot of fun a lot of energy uh, it could be kind of like bowling balls in the back uh, loose in the back of a pickup truck but you know you, you never know how it's going to how it's going to turn out <laughs> Exactly. You guys got an opening band or anything that's coming along? You gonna have local people opening or? I don't think. I'm not sure if tomorrow has one or not. I don't know. You know. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I'm not sure if the venue is it can do that or not. Right. But not sure. All right. Well, I'm just kind of curious. So as far as uh, Bill, you, Alan, you guys? Yeah, got I got. Else? I got a question oh, wait, real Bill. quick. Sorry. Go ahead. Hey, Todd. So um. It's interesting. So this many years later, after you guys have been together, I mean, back getting back together, it sounds to me like the approach is very different. You know, from what you're talking about is there's no e- it doesn't seem like there's egos. It's like you're a great guitar player. You do that really well. I lead sing too. let's just go out there, have a good time, do our best. How is that different today than it was back in the early days of Freddie's Comet and early days of playing in a band? Just age has age just really got to the point where people are. It's not about his egos as much anymore as it is about going out, putting on a good show, and having fun. Is it? Has it changed? That it's it's changed into a more maturity level. I can't really speak for Richie because I I've never worked with him before. Uh, you know, Richie was a part of the band in the beginning, so he has that 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 um, you know uh, beginning structural foundation, and then he played with Matra, but he was also. Uh, still part of uh, being under Ace's thumb to a degree, but only to a degree because Richie is such a phenomenal player and, and inspiring. You know, I, like I said, I just I, I became well aware of his t- his talent uh, in just playing with him. Uh, the ego, there's not an ego thing. There's there's more of a just. We, yes, we're doing it for the fun of the fans to see if we can get out there and play. You know, make a little bit of money, of course, but that's only just so we can do this, and maybe continue to do it. Uh, you know, John doesn't have an ego except for the the, the pride in playing, you know, mm-hmm. properly on stage and providing fun for people. And, and Steve's, you know, he's a budgie is just an amazing player that the, pretty much the same thing. He wants to get out there and play. He's definitely got the chops uh, and he wants to give the, the audience what they want to hear. And he's having fun, too. Richie always has fun as he gets, when he gets on stage. As do I when I get up there. I'm, I'm. That's my favorite time to be anywhere is on stage because then we're giving, you know, what, what the fans maybe want to hear, uh, and the energy and the fun and, and the nostalgic thing about it. I mean, this is 30 years later, so yeah. for for I mean from the, well for Richie is beyond that from the inception, 
but generally speaking, I guess 30 years later, and yeah, it's the maturity is there. There's no ego. It's 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 all you know, it's all um, diplomatic in in decisions. Um, some are obvious decisions because Richie does this, does that. I do this, and I do that. And it, yeah, R Rich and I have no. There's no head bumping. You know, there's he'll say, "Can you play it this way?" I said, "Well, I never play it that way." But you know, you you wrote the song, so yeah, or you know, you co-wrote this to him. Yeah, I'll play it that way because that's that's you know, the way you hear it. And I'm going to sing it this way, that song, because that's the way I hear it. I'm a singer, you know. So no, absolutely no ego, no problems. Just let's get out there and let them have fun. Awesome. awesome. Sounds like it'll be a blast. I mean, I, I. I, it'd be awesome to be out on the on the East Coast in the next couple of days, but yeah, unfortunately, no I'm not going. I was out there so, last weekend. So. so since we can't be there, you need to hire a full video production crew and get DVDs <laughs> made and put it on YouTube. There are, our, our, our guy Tommy, I think, is going to film some of it. Oh, I would love that. He, he films the good stuff, you know, because there's, cool. there's going to be some jabronis and mistakes here and there, I'm sure. But um, you know, the thing is that even with that, uh, the energy and, and the happiness and then just, you know, giving it to the fans, you know, I, I've had to memorize one hell of a lot of lyrics, you know, in the last few, uh, well, about a month and a half since the, that I've been working on this, aside from doing other stuff. So hopefully I'll remember the lyrics, but if you don't, you know, that screw them up, I'm still having a good time, you know. And, hey, it's live music. Yeah, it's live. Live exactly. music. And, you know, the fans, sometimes they sing along, you sing the wrong note, they're going, <laughs> do the Vince Neil just, just, throw, <laughs> just throw it down in front of the mic oh, down there and say, "Come on, yeah, don't he scream!" <laughs> he screams a note because I, my wife and I went to one of the, not the last, not, she went to the last tour. Right? I went, I went one with her a few years back, and his favorite thing is always scream the, the a note right out there that has absolutely nothing to do with the key they're playing in. Yeah. <laughs> you can get away with it because he's Vince Neil, you know. <laughs> exactly. So, where can we? Uh, where can people can follow? where you're going to be. And also like uh, for us that can't go to the East coast, is there a way we can get t-shirts and stuff like that? Buy uh, yes, there, nice? there is on the website, uh, www.returnofthecometband.com. Okay. That's where all the stuff happens. Um, we each, or, you know, John and I promote certain things on our, our uh, pages. My uh, web, my personal uh, website is going to be is being going to be reworked here shortly. Um, and but you know the website for the return of the comet band is the best place to go yeah okay because i do want to get those t-shirts look really cool and i want to get i want to i want to support you know like i said support ah, you guys because that's, that's the whole point is supporting a couple that were the first design i and saw those what you made <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool. I, I made those but i also made these prints i don't mean i well one's packed away every time i open the suitcase john's cat gets in there you know <laughs> You don't want that. You know, well, I love doesn't... cats. I'm deathly allergic to them, so I'm going to put a... Yeah, you don't want to get sick now before that whole thing starts. Yeah. Oh, that would be yeah. bad. It's, well, I had the scare. I had to... And that was the picture, getting back to the sickness thing. You know, I'm calling the doctor. My, my uh, ear, nose, and throat guy, and I had to have camera shoved down to make sure everything's okay. And there was still agitation in my throat two weeks ago. Right. So I'm still... It's, it's weird because I had influenza laryngitis i'd never heard of that before but wow. it took me right and did same thing to my wife she's still hoarse right now so i had to go back and i got uh, 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 another set of uh, 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 tamiflu preventative so i didn't relapse out here with it and go you know then it just takes my voice out and i just sit there and you know mime my lyrics you know right. and i don't have mime so that's not going to go over very well so yeah it's a <laughs> piss I, I wish i was in a better i'm in good shape I wish I was in a you know better shape, but uh, I think it'll be okay. Exactly. I'm sure it'll be great. I Thank just you. like wish we were there. Yeah, we wish. It's gonna we were be too. fun, you know. If 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 certain shortcuts have to be done to, to accommodate whatever, but it's going to be fun. I can tell you that much. It's gonna be a blast. Cool. Awesome. Well, hopefully we can have you on here uh, maybe in a month or two once you get some of these shows through and we'll sure. get like a report on how things went and and maybe some yeah. updates on what's going on and we'll keep yeah, just, keep everybody. Just, you know, Breast. You so. better, yeah. Just give me a give me a ring, uh, give me a note. I'll tell you what's working for me. Uh, which is, it's gonna be a good schedule when I got back. I've got you know a shit list of things I've got to do, including working on the Harleys. Uh, one of my Harleys was rifled through, and I got some stuff stolen off it. And uh, I got to prepare for uh, a, uh, a uh, Sturgis trip, and 
And but then I got to do a lot of work on you know my stuff, my book, my music, the property. It just never ends. And I get out here, and usually it's like I do rehearsals and, and shows, but the rest of the time it's like I can read, I can write, I can relax a little bit. You know, so it's kind of nice. You know, I get the I get the hang of stuff like this and, <laughs> and that. That just, yeah, there you go. <laughs> just recently, I leaned back and came out and popped my head, and you know. Yeah. I'm jumping we're we're right. in John Regan's it's, extra it's, bedroom now. We could we go through, yeah. rifle, rifle through all this shit. <laughs> it's a great room, it really is. You know, <laughs> usually if today was the cat bathroom, so <laughs> bath, bath room, I there think. You go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. But, Thanks yeah. a lot, man. We appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, and good You're luck, man. Over the next few days, break a leg. You guys tear it up. I know you guys will. And yeah, I can't wait to see. Lot of fun. I, I was gonna. I'm, I'm. Thank you very much for putting down the dates because I was trying to figure them out. You know, I've got them printed up here somewhere, but they're packed away. But, uh, you know, I really appreciate uh, appreciate it so much. Um, uh, like, give me a call later on, and and oh. uh, be glad to talk to you guys. And I really appreciate Alan, Bill, and and Dennis. No, yes, is that right? Yes, yes. Got it. Got it. <laughs> we yeah. call him other things, but that works. <laughs> oh, we all have pet names for each other, you know. Exactly. That's what they call yeah, me. that's what they are. Yeah, <laughs> affectionate names. Yeah, yeah, let me go back. You bet. All right. Well, all, right. Luck, all right, folks. Right. Catch us on the next episode. Right. Visit us on 80 com. In the meantime, check out our social media, Stitcher Radio, and all of that good stuff. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks.